so I'm finally sitting down and filming. It has been the longest last two months of my life, which is why I have not been on YouTube. With everything going on, I wanted to have the right mindset to film and I have just been going through so many things physically and mentally. I was not in the right mindset, the right space to really be making YouTube videos. Basically, I wanted to sit down with you guys and do a chatty get ready with me because I have not sat down and actually done my makeup in so long actually the last two months for those of you who continue to support me and actually give a shit about what has been going on in my life this video is to basically explain why i haven't been putting out any content and that i am definitely back in the game now because i feel like i now mostly have my shit together i'm still working on a lot of things but for now i feel like i am emotionally stable enough to talk about some of the things that i have been going through we all know little disclaimer if you are super sensitive to profanity or if you are easily offended this is not the place for you i'm a no filter bitch and i have no idea what's gonna come out of my mouth especially today so keep that in mind while you're watching so if you guys are interested in hearing what the hell has been going on for the past two months why i've been missing for youtube and just want to see me put on some makeup then just stay tuned and first let's begin with i look and feel like shit as you can tell from my face i have a lot of stress going on just like any other get ready with me i will leave everything that i'm using on my face in the description box below in case you guys want to check it out it has just been the best yet worst last two months of my life it's like where do i start where do i begin my previous videos i'm not exactly sure which one but i was talking about how my husband and i were buying our first home well we had closed on the home i believe on somewhere around the end of march and we were scheduled to move our furniture into the new house by april 9th so so with the way this house was set up when we bought it it was a fucking nightmare like it the house itself was great it was the the things that you can customize yourself like the walls fixtures you know flooring all that stuff the walls were a little not to my liking because they were legit blue like dark navy blue i don't know why i have a nerf gun bullet here but as an example this is actually like the color blue that the walls were in the living room and it was just absolutely terrible every single time i walked into this house i was like i love this house so much but these walls are so fucking depressing i had until april 9th to make those kind of changes to the house and when i say changes i mean like paint you know everything that can get done before the furniture actually moves into the house so that is actually when I first stopped, you know, filming because I didn't have time. I was packing because, you know, my husband works a full-time job. So I was at home trying to pack everything, trying to get everything, you know, cleared up. And then I was also coming back to the new house, which is like 15 minutes away from the last one. And so I was going back and forth. I was painting here. I was, you know, cleaning here. And when I say cleaning, I was deep fucking cleaning. I'm a little bit of a germaphobe. I'm one of those people who constantly wash my hands. My hands are so dry, they're cracked. I wipe everything with an antibacterial wipe. Like I'm just kind of like that person. Before we were moving into the house, I wanted it completely like sanitized like i wanted to wash the floors the baseboards the walls the seat like everything that i could get my hands on i wanted to literally bleach the whole house the one thing that had happened that we noticed was when we first looked at the house there was a potent super duper potent piss smell going throughout the house and so i knew at that point that it was going to be in the carpets and there was going to be no way to really get it out but I was going to try my best because, you know, I'm a little stubborn. So I was like, I'm going to get this shit out. My husband and I didn't really want to spend money on new flooring, but we also didn't want carpet in our house because carpet, I, I just don't know why anybody would want carpet in their house. It traps smells, it traps dust and dirt, and it's so hard to clean. I just honestly don't understand why people have carpet in their house. And when I say carpet, I don't mean like an area rug. I mean like actual legit carpet to where the whole room is carpeted. I had spent a couple of days running the carpet cleaner between my room and our master bedroom and let me just tell you i have never in my fucking life seen a more disgusting tub of water from the carpet cleaner it's like the people who lived here never dusted they never vacuumed they never wiped anything down like the way these people were living it was pretty fucking disgusting which is why i wanted to disinfect the entire place because the house itself is so cute i wasn't going to hold it against the house you know what i'm saying because it's not the house's fault that it was stinky and not 
well kept. I carpet cleaned my room maybe about three or four times. Same thing with the bedroom and the smell was just not coming up. So my husband agreed that we could get some new flooring into the house. Our entire living, dining, kitchen, all that area was the original wood flooring, but our bedroom and my makeup room was all carpeted. So we went to Lowe's and we decided that we were going to go with a laminate flooring, but it looks like wood. So it's easy to clean up. It's easy to vacuum wipe down especially since we have a lot of animals if they were going to have any accidents it would be so much easier to take care of i thought that i was going to be able to have enough time from the end of march and to the 9th of april to paint this entire house and when i say paint this entire house i mean the master bedroom my room living room dining room bathroom and kitchen i don't know what the fuck i was thinking i think i put like way too much confidence in myself and i was like bitch i'm gonna be able to paint all that uh no i was not able to paint that especially by myself so i'm totally grateful for my friend who came over like she spent her days off helping me paint this shithole i was able to get the master bedroom the living room the dining room all done with her help and i was able to get the bathroom done with one of my other friends help all i had left then was my bedroom and the kitchen which we aren't even gonna fucking get into that also that is why you are seeing this boo-boo brown door because this is the color this this nasty ugly boo-boo brown color right here is literally the color of all our doors in this house and that shit's gotta go so i apologize because this background is not really something to look at but again i'm not fully set up here again with the lighting as well so give me a little bit more time and i will get everything set up but as of right now i just wanted to sit down film this and talk with you guys so back on track i was able to get the bathroom finished literally a day before the movers were coming our master bedroom were these two colors now when i say these two colors i mean orange and blue i don't know if they were like denver broncos fans or something but it was the just weirdest combination for a baby room it was orange and blue the living room was like a really dark navy blue for their accent wall and the rest was like a pukey brown beige color now i'm from a military family and i just cannot do beige walls anymore because when you live in military housing everything is beige walls so i picked a really really pretty almost white with a tint of blue type of color and it looks really nice especially with all the white trim and then of course i'm going to be painting the rest of the doors in the house white so it'll actually go with like the place a little more finally the movers come on april 9th we had our flooring scheduled for april 25th we were already unpacking we were getting our furniture moved in but we didn't want to unpack everything because we were going to be having to move the furniture from my room and the master bedroom out again so that people could come in and take off the carpet and do the wood flooring well this is where shit starts happening all of a sudden about i want to say two or three days before we are supposed to have the flooring people come in my husband calls me from work and he's like hey remember how i was supposed to go fix the car today backstory on that our nissan murano we had bought it three years ago and all of a sudden this last winter like at the end of winter kind of like in the beginning of spring we started having these really weird noises coming from the exhaust area and so my husband went to go get it like looked at because it started getting louder so the people at the shop told my husband that they were surprised that either the brakes have not gone out yet or that our car had not blown up mind you we only have one car because my husband works i stay at home i didn't want to ride or drive in that car after he told me that because my anxiety just shot through the roof why are we driving something that can literally blow up in any second or the brakes could be like gone any second and so my husband's like there is so much wrong with the car that there's no point in even fixing it we need to get a new car what like we had just moved into the house everything's going smooth you know and now our car takes a shit my husband and i went to the dealership that exact same day and we were able to buy a a better car sorry i went ahead and did my brows because i can't do my brows and talk at the same time it's just impossible anyways so we got the new car and you know i was like cool now all we have to do is wait for the flooring people to come here and do our flooring we had scheduled the flooring to come in on april 25th my husband and i got this weird feeling that they were gonna fuck up the schedule i don't know why we had this feeling like i can't remember why or what made us come to this conclusion but we decided to call lowe's and make sure that we had scheduled 
for the 25th. They let us know that we were going to have to move our furniture out of each room. It has to be basically, you know, cleared out so they can come in and do the flooring. And they were gonna come in between like eight to 12 or something like that, like that time frame. We needed to use the bed until the 24th and we were going to sleep on the couches that night. So the next morning, the floors, the floors can, do their thing. We started moving stuff into the living room on the 23rd and we were just moving our furniture slowly out, taking our time because we're like, eh, they're not coming till the 25th. Tomorrow's when all the moving is gonna happen. We have to get everything out. I wanted everything to be moved out of the way so we could actually still function in the living room and the dining room while the people were doing our flooring. So the next morning pops up and lo and behold, I hear something. I'm like half asleep, half awake and I hear pounding and I'm like, huh? Then I hear it again and my husband kind of lifts his head off the pillow and I look at him, I'm like, is someone at our door? Guess who's at the fucking door at 7.45 in the morning? The florist. My husband and I were like, what the fuck are you guys doing here? Like you guys are supposed to come here on the 25th. They're like, oh no, it, the schedule said 24th. And I was like, no, we called and made sure three times, three times that the schedule was for the 25th for eight to 12 o'clock and we were sure of it. I wrote on the fucking calendar. They did tell us that if we wanted, we could schedule it for another time, but I didn't have that time because my friend was actually flying in from New York the following week, like the 30th of April. So they started on the flooring, but you know, we still had all that furniture in my room and in the bedroom because we were literally sleeping on our bed. So our dresser was still in the bedroom, our bed was still in the bedroom. Mind you, we have a king size bed, so it's really fucking huge. It's not really easy to just slide on out of the bedroom. I had a lot of shit in my room, other boxes as well, not just furniture. They wanted us to move all these within like five minutes. Really? I literally just woke up and now I have to move fucking furniture because you guys came 24 hours early. I was really pissed off. My husband was really pissed off. We were fighting. We were bickering the whole time these guys were here. They're probably like, what? the fuck is wrong with this couple it was just so fucking miserable for both of us that we were just we just didn't want anything to do with anything or anybody while the workers were here i actually got a call from the head guy of the flooring place and he was like hey i heard that we came a day early and you know i just wanted to see how everything's going this dude did not apologize once not once on the phone to me about coming a day early unexpectedly and having to move stuff. Now, I was very thankful of the florists, like the actual physical people who came to our house and did our flooring because not only were they efficient and fast, they actually helped us move some of our furniture because our furniture was not moved out of the room. That really, really stressed me out. Like for some reason that entire day, I just was not fucking having it. I was bitching, I was whining, I was complaining the whole time because I just don't do well with things that just pop up out of the blue. I need some type of warning to prepare myself to plan. I'm a planner. I am just, I need shit to go according to plan and none of that went even close to according to plan. Now that the flooring is finished, they're out of there. It's now, you know, the next day, uh, we're slowly starting to like move our, actually after they had left, we moved our bed back into our bedroom. And then I started kind of working on my room a little bit, unpacking things, but I didn't want to unpack too much. And I didn't want to put like my furniture back into the room because I still had to paint my makeup room. This room was such a fucking ugly ass color. It was like this dark, brown like literally almost the same as this wall right here it was just so bad it was so dark so dingy in here and i fucking hated it i went to lowe's got some paint you know and i was like i need to paint this before my friend comes my friend is coming on april 30th like i need to get shit done this next thing i'm going to talk about is probably one of the main reasons why i just was not on youtube very much because something that has like I've never experienced before in my life happened. We had gotten the floorings done and my husband and I were just like going about our day. And when we went to go feed the dogs, for some reason, Roxy just wasn't feeling herself and she didn't want any food. Roxy is very, very food motivated. She loves her food and she just always gets really hype about her food. So when she doesn't eat her food, it usually means she's not feeling well. Like, you know, you can just tell. She was just acting very, very strange, but she had a lot of energy. And so we just thought it was, you know, it was nothing really, really big. We feed our pets like three times a day in small portions. 
options. I think the second set of food she just really didn't want. And then towards dinner time, she didn't want to eat at all. And she actually started throwing up. She still hadn't eaten in the morning. And we were just like, okay, again, maybe she has an upset stomach. We took Roxy to the vet and she got some fluids. She got some blood work. She got some tests. And they said like, you know, it might be her gallbladder is a little bit inflamed. We don't really see anything that's going on. And I think at one point they tried to tell tell us that she had like hepatitis or something like that. I, I, I honestly cannot remember. It's such a blur to me. We took her back home and we had her meds with her and we were just like, all right, we were all just kind of outside chilling, you know, um, just being in the sun and just enjoying being outside. At this point, she had still a lot of energy. She was, you know, playing ball with my husband, playing fetch because that was like her favorite thing to do. That night, um, Roxy wasn't eating again. And we were just like, you know, maybe maybe she's still not feeling good because you know she's on meds now and she just had fluids Roxy was acting a little strange when it was time for us to kind of go to bed i thought that maybe she just wasn't feeling very um she was just feeling kind of uneasy my husband went to bed and i decided i'm gonna stay in the living room in case anything happens like if she throws up or if she just needs something like you know maybe she gets hungry or she needs water or something like i'm gonna be there for that because I'm more of a light sleeper than my husband is. So I was like, I'll take care of it. I'll just sleep in the living room. She was pacing back and forth between the bedroom, living room, kitchen. She was just walking all over the house and kind of doing these weird things that she normally wouldn't do with the other pets. Maybe she was feeling a little off and down. And so she just wanted some loving and attention and just to be, you know, pet and hugged and cuddled. At one point I was in the kitchen getting a drink of water and she just kind of looked off. To me she looked very sad i thought it was really weird because she was around me more than usual if that makes sense like i mean she would be around me any other time she would cuddle with me and stuff but for this particular night she was following me around more than usual i actually knelt down and just kind of like put my forehead up against hers and just kind of like pet her you know behind her ears and stuff i was telling her she's a pretty girl and you know like it's okay like you'll feel better in the morning she had kind of relaxed a little bit and so i went back to the couch and she went into the bedroom so i thought okay maybe now she feels comfortable enough for laying down and going to sleep when i was on the couch i was falling asleep and right as i was about to fall asleep my husband comes running into the living room and he is cradling roxy and she is having a seizure i watch a lot a lot of vet shows because i i just love it i've always been into that kind of stuff and so when i saw her i knew it was that she was having a seizure and i told him straight away i was like we have to go he's like what do you mean i was like we need to go we need to take her to the emergency room right now she's having a seizure you need to put her down and you need to just kind of like hold her i was actually driving and my husband had roxy in the back seat he was holding her in her arms and she was starting to seize um some more and luckily the emergency vet clinic was right down the street literally five minutes away from our house i have never ever had to experience this in my life i've always seen my pets like you know go to like a lovely older couple and they were happy and so it was sad that i was partying with them but i knew that they were gonna live the rest of their life in like a really happy place like they're they were going to be comfortable and those people were going to take care of them i never had to deal with the loss of a pet through um death when we had taken roxy in to the emergency vet i could just tell by the look on the doctor's face that um most likely she wasn't going to come home with us that that morning the doctor told us that there are things that they can do but it's going to get very expensive and we just aren't we're just not there financially. The physical aspects is that she would gradually become deaf and blind and she would probably start becoming anxious and nervous and the mental aspect of it was that she would slowly forget who we are. So they had taken her to the back of the emergency room and he, the doctor said that, you know, you need to decide what's going to happen and I'm just gonna tell you straight out right now what needs to happen. I had already known what we needed to do and the hard part was to convince my husband the same. It finally took us two hours to, it, it took me two hours to basically get my husband to move, if that makes sense. The emergency doctor had told us he has our vet information. Um, they open, you know, at seven o'clock. It was already 6.20 at this point. And he told me, you know, we'll get Roxy ready so you guys can transport her to your vet. That was probably like the hardest drive of my life. 
I was driving and my husband was in the back seat holding Roxy and it was just so hard seeing him hold her and her just being so like out of it like sleepy and just so relaxed but you can tell you could tell that she was ready it felt like it was just all a dream like this shit is just happening so fast like I just kept replaying in my head they were just playing fetch less, less than 24 hours like literally less than less than 12 hours ago now I'm on the way driving her to put her down you know and it was the toughest thing I ever 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 experienced in my life of losing a pet or even a person because I had to see it happen we got there a little bit earlier than seven but they were already ready for us for the last time my husband asked is there anything else that we can do and there was nothing after the process had happened i couldn't leave her there i couldn't leave her there she was already gone but i didn't want to leave the room i just felt so bad because there was nothing i could do after all that um my husband actually had to pull me out of the room because i wasn't leaving um it was really hard but no time no time for that no time to grieve no time to do any of that because i did not have the house ready the first day i let myself cry i let myself grieve and the next day i felt like shit didn't want to do anything my husband and i were just kind of floating through life at um those two days and then after the second day i told myself you know what no more crying you have shit to do you can deal with this after you're done with everything and you can cry about it as much as you want you can feel it as much as you want but right now you have so much shit that you need to do that you need to finish and you need to take care of that you just don't have time for this so what i did is after the second day i was like done I'm done crying about it. I'm done feeling about it right now. Um, I need to get my ass going and get my room ready, get the house more prepared. And that is what I did. The next day I taped up my room and I started painting it. There were times where I would sit and cry while I was painting, but you know what? I didn't give a shit because it was getting it done. And that's all that mattered at the point at that time. I was able to get the entire place primed in one day this room was so dark and gross it was just it was bad um so i needed two coats of primer and two coats of paint just to cover how dark it was in here the second day i was able to put the pink on and touch up a little bit of the you know white um edges and baseboards now i had to move all my furniture back into the room i had to set up the futon i wanted to get you know my cable and all that ready and i wanted to get my vanity ready so i could actually start doing my makeup for when my friends here since we're gonna go out have fun i'm pretty proud because i was able to do that in two days and that's a lot with everything that i was dealing with well, that's why i said in the beginning that this was probably the best and worst last two months of my life because best is we bought our own home like we bought our first house and my best friend came to visit me you know and some other stuff that's happening later on that i'll explain um that just made this month like these last two months the best month and of course the worst two months of my life because i lost a pet that i love dearly um not a lot of things for the house went according to plan my best friend showed up on the 30th she flew in and i went to go pick her up i'm really thankful that she came when she did and you know was able to take my mind off of things that had just recently happened we just had a really good time like we weren't really rushing to do anything a lot of the times we were just home talking doing our makeup or doing skincare and it was just a nice thing to have to have your girlfriend there at a time like that you know when i took her to the airport i actually actually he started crying in my car because it was just like oh now I'm back to you know having to deal with everything that I didn't want to deal with while she was here if that makes sense like I wasn't letting myself deal with it after she had left um I kind of just went back into a weird place I didn't really want to communicate with anybody I didn't want to do any kind of social media 
I didn't care about Instagram. I didn't care about YouTube. I didn't care about even keeping in touch with my friends. I just kind of shut down for a little bit. I was not doing okay mentally. Um, everything just kind of came and went super duper fast and I just felt like I didn't have time to process what was actually happening. When I actually had a moment to just sit down and think, I just cried like I cried for like an hour I think every night after my friend left I was crying in the shower for the whole time <laughs> and then I'd come out and be like okay like you need to stop you need to straighten up you need to be you need to be good to go because you know your husband needs you your pets need you like you need to snap out of it so the only time I would actually let myself cry was in the shower it was something that I just had to go through and had to deal with and deal with in my own way and the only way that I was going to do that was without being on social media because I couldn't even concentrate on actually filming a video because I would just like fuck it I don't want to do this you know what I mean I didn't want to get in front of the camera I wasn't ready to and a lot of my friends said you, you know you just you got to stop you need to grieve like you need to process everything that's happened in the last month and you need to just take a break like just breathe okay go to sleep get some rest do what you need to do with the house because there's still a lot of things that need to be done with the house and so I was also battling with that I was just depressed I was really really depressed my husband and I weren't really talking very much because uh, we were left with a quiet house again after my friend had left you know she added a little bit of noise to the house which was great and then after it was just like it just got quiet again and we just we couldn't handle it my husband actually came up to me one day and he asked me you know can we get a puppy and I asked him would that would that help you with this process a little bit more at first he kind of was like you know I feel kind of guilty because I feel like it's too soon I told him there's no right amount of time for grief and some people like we actually googled it everyone was saying like a month or like you know maybe half a year some people were saying the next day some people were saying a week honestly I wasn't necessarily ready for a puppy like at all <laughs> the last time I had a puppy back home with one of my exes I actually had to take it back the next day because my anxiety I was having like three or four panic attacks within the 20 first 24 hours that I had that puppy because it was just pissing and shitting and whining and crying and just like you know they're all over the place and so I just wasn't mentally ready for that yet but then I thought about it and I was like, I need to do this. Like my husband needs this. Maybe I need it and I just don't know it. We actually went to one of the local shelters here and we had found a very beautiful boxer dog. Her name was Callie and she was about, I want to say like one or two years old. We mostly wanted to get someone for Bella because she was just really not herself. It was almost starting to concern me because she would go outside and start looking for Roxy and it just broke my heart each and every single time we took her out. She wouldn't bark anymore. She wouldn't wag her tail. Just nothing excited her. All she did was sleep all day long. So we had brought Callie home from the shelter and I'm not even kidding you, less than an hour later, we had to take her back. The shelter had told us that they had just got her in the day before from Texas. She's good around other dogs if she's like, if they're submissive. So she was more of like an alpha girl. And Bella is a very submissive dog. So we're like, no problem. Except no one really knew how she did with cats. And so we we're like, nah, she can't be that bad, right? We were fucking wrong. <laughs> as soon as we brought her home and she saw Meow Meow and Corbin, it just wasn't happening. You know when those dogs get into that like zone where they're like, I have to fucking catch it. I have to kill it. That's basically what she was doing. Like she wanted to hunt our cats. She would not leave the front of the cat tower and just stared at Corbin for like a good 15 minutes. My husband was like, I have to keep snapping her out of it. But anytime the cats move, she's like right there in front of them. And she just, she wants Adam. And I was like, we can't have that. I, I, I just can't have some rando threatening my babies, you know? I really wanted it to work, but she just, she just wasn't a fit for us. And so my husband was kind of let down by it. I was a little let down by it, but we were just like, you know what? Maybe it is a symbol for the universe that we're just not quite there yet. It was very unfortunate because again, she would have been the perfect match if she had loved cats. 
but it just wasn't gonna it just wasn't gonna pan out we had taken her back and we had gone to the shelter over and over looking for puppies we figured you know maybe bella will be happier with a puppy because they will grow up with her and they will grow up with the kit with corbin which is only a year old and they they'll maybe form some kind of bond the day that my friend left which was like the sixth or seventh again i i don't remember um we had set up an appointment or a uh, just uh get together with this lady who had two litters of labradoodles my husband's like i really really want to go and see them she had a lot of uh beige cream colored labradoodles and she also had black labradoodles and so i told my husband you know don't get too excited we don't know what's going to happen we don't know if we're going to be able to come home with one or whatever we had to drive an hour and a half which is the longest i've ever driven since we moved here and it was just through like really boring farmland it was probably one of the worst drives going there because it made me so it made my anxiety just go through the fucking roof i really can't stand when i'm driving through areas like that that is a long stretch of road with nothing because then i'm like if i have to pee or if i have to use the bathroom where the fuck am i gonna go you know what i mean there's no buildings there's no houses there's no community there's no you know there's no civilization and to me it really, really gets my anxiety hyped up because it's like, what's gonna happen? I am one of those people who I do not care if I have to go pee, like I'll go in the bushes, but there weren't any bushes. Like there was literally nothing. So I was like, if I have to pee, everyone's gonna see my business. For some reason, things like that will literally make my anxiety just skyrocket when we got there um this lady she had such like she had a huge thing of land she had cows she had donkeys she had chickens she had dogs she had all kinds of animals she had just taken the puppies outside the day before because the mother just i guess wanted nothing to do with them had weaned them off they were about six weeks old and they were just the most precious cutest little things there running around at your feet you know biting and nipping each other sleeping on top of each other it just brought me to like this really really happy place and um my dad had always taught me to do like the strength test with puppies which is when you take a puppy and you put it on its back and you hold it and if they start to struggle they're basically a weak puppy they're going to be very submissive they're probably going to be not very strong they're not going to be protective there's this one cute black puppy that i just saw i like saw her face and i she was just kind of sitting there and i picked her up and flipped her over and i fell in love immediately i just didn't let go of her she actually fell asleep on her back on in my arms and i could not leave without her i already made my decision basically my husband was carrying another one and he's like isn't she cute and i'm like no <laughs> like yes i mean they're all cute but this is my top pick like this is the one that i want my husband held her and just kind of like gave her a, a once over looked at her made sure like you know everything's good to go and he's like she's she's fucking adorable like let's take her we were driving all the way back and the whole time my husband was sitting in the back with her and she was like in this little cat kennel because she was just so tiny she wasn't barking she wasn't whining she wasn't crying none of that stuff she was just so cute and quiet and my husband's like i think she's gonna be a smart one like you can kind of tell by her demeanor that she wasn't gonna be like a really dumb dog like it, I, I don't know it sounds silly but you get what i'm saying you, you get a little feeling with these kinds of things <laughs> it's it's been a process since then um i have lost my patience several times i'm just my my husband has to keep reminding me she's just a puppy she's just a puppy and i'm like i fucking get it but i can't like i, I literally can't it's so much anxiety you know <laughs> like it's just sometimes it's just a little too much i get really frustrated with her very easily because i'm just not a very patient person when it comes to patience i guess she is very very fucking smart because she is already ringing the bell to go outside which to me is like hallelujah oh by the way we named her lilu um after fifth element if you don't know what that is then i'm sorry you are too young or you're just we can't be friends it's very hard for me to get used to all this but i am trying as hard as i possibly can and i just really really need to learn patience though because i am not at all patient especially with puppies so i'm getting there during all this process i have kind of been developing a lot of pain on my right side um, i noticed about two to three weeks ago was when i actually started having numbness in my right hand i did go to the chiropractor yesterday for the first time my right leg was half an inch shorter than my left leg um i had a lot of like 
um, leaning on my left side because like this whole right side has been tense. I had numbness from like here to my shoulder and then I can actually feel everything from here up and then my hand, it's like really tingly feeling. Of course, I'm going to be sore today because everything's been kind of cracked and relieved, but my wrist now hurts kind of more than it ever has and I'm actually having a lot of pain in my arm right here. I don't know if I actually made things worse or if they're going to gradually get better, but I also have to have uh, massage therapy. I have to get x-rays done. I'm pretty sure it's not as like bad as they make it sound, but I am just in a lot of pain. I've been in a lot of pain for the last two months. Um, I think it's because I had to push myself so hard to get everything finished. So I'm done with my makeup and I am just, I really appreciate you guys if you guys have gotten this far in the video for just listening to me and understanding that I have been going through a lot and I just needed time to get my mental health in check and to feel like myself again and to be confident enough to get in front of the camera and just normal enough to be able to just sit down and talk with you guys. One of my friends told me that I'm almost at 2000 subscribers and I'm really, really thankful for that. I, you guys don't know how much how much I am thankful and grateful to you guys. I know that I get a lot of backlash for like the way I talk and the way I do stuff, but I just always wanna stay true to myself and I always wanna be honest with you guys and that's why I'm here. I am just so grateful and thankful for each and every one of you and for your time and for watching my videos and just just simply being there. Now, before I close out this video, I, got, I want you guys to meet our newest family member and this is... Lilu, say hi it is your first time on video little girl so this is Lilu. of course we named her after our my husband and i's favorite movie which is fifth element and that is also why we have our cat corbin for corbin dallas and so we have Lilu multipass she is almost 10 weeks old she has she is a labradoodle so her mom is a standard poodle and her dad is a labrador and she is just this ball of fur this cutest thing but she will not stop chomping on our fingers you will not no she's got baby breath she's got baby teeth she yaps and keeps me up all night she shits and pisses on everything but she has been so good the last couple of days we actually have like this string of uh bells on our door and she actually goes and rings that whenever she has to go potty so she is getting that potty training on look at her she's just the cutest little thing ever. <laughs> you guys will be seeing her in some videos, of course, because I cannot wait to see how this girl grows. And I mean, just look at this face, this face. I picked that face. Like this is the face that when I was holding, I was like, we're taking her home. Like we gotta take her home, huh, baby? Oh yes. So again, I appreciate all of you if you guys have watched this far into the video and I hope you guys continue to support me and I love you guys so, so much. If you guys want, just reach out to me in the comment section if you're having a hard time and hopefully my videos can, you know, let you guys know that you are not alone. So don't ever feel like you are. But that is it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you did, please give a thumbs up and don't forget to click that big red button that says subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that bell notification so you actually know when I post my videos. And as always, if you have any tips, tricks, questions, comments, or if you simply want to talk shit, leave it all in the comment section below. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye.